Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living and return with having. When we have to do this living outdoors because of cybercrime, identity theft, and total fraud on our financial situations, our medical records, our actual advances in career, we must not hold the people that were originally in our life anywhere remotely dear. Someone thought they had a game to play on my life, and they tried to play that game, but they're running into the knife of the Lord. The sword of the Lord is both two-sided and deadly, and what we're seeing across the world is a disease called COVID. We have always had the flu that hit us, usually in fall every year, and people tout that people have to get flu shots. But here's what I learned about those shots, that when you take that shot, you're actually giving yourself the flu. Most people don't actually survive without getting the flu once they get that shot. At least nobody that I knew who got the shot survived it very well. What I know is that different people have different cellular health. And different cellular health belongs to the individual, not some community of liaisons, not some birth family of, of morons. We have individual rights in America. Those rights are guaranteed by the United States international treaties, such as what we hold dear in the United Nations around the world. We were the leader in the Declaration of Human Rights. We were the authors, mainly, of those rights. Those rights were based on not only the good book of the Bible and the principles that the Lord taught us through those historic stories and lineages of Jesus Christ, but they were also clearly written based on our own motherfucking Constitution. And in our Constitution, we have the right to report as any type of author or any type of creator or any type of journalist or any type of actual reporter. We also have the right to freedom of assembly, which means we have the right to interact with anyone we like, presuming it's mutual or participating in the rebuttal, not at all, the repair of relationships. And I am literally sitting outside and you can hear probably the background noise of incredibly obnoxious, incredibly loud people that don't care much about anybody else's noise sensitivities or anybody else's city ordinances on noise. Most affluent and influential cities have a noise ordinance that says you may be as noisy as you like until it interferes with someone else's life. We have that ordinance in the town in which I came from, which was about 10 times of this town. It's not that I've never been in a college town before, but even my university college town was larger than this. They also handled the international foreign students a hell of a lot better than this. They required them to live in the foreign dorms. Keeping them in the foreign dorms allowed them many things. It allowed them social networks. It allowed them cross-cultural relationships. It allowed them a way to kind of keep tabs on each other. And it allowed the university its liabilities and legalities in bringing those students from foreign lands here. When they are not housed in the same dorms, it means they're intermixing, whether we like it or not, with American students. Not that that's not wrong. Not that that's not right. The reality is they should be intermixing in technically led classes by a professor who understands the literal risks to American lives in those rooms and who can spot the liars of the land pretty soon. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth about American citizenship. And while we still have paltry state-by-state -state birth certificates, those birth certificates belong only and solely to the individual. It is possible that a mother of an underage child can get a copy of a birth certificate, but it's not lawful for someone who is not the actual person who is of age of majority to take care of that in any way, shape, or form. But when I got copies of my birth certificate from the state in which I was born, I marveled at the number of people who were not actually foreign-born who were working in the receipt office, where I'd have to go and pay for the actual copy. I've also had several of those copies mailed to my home. I found it interesting that when I paid for one, I actually got four or three one time, and then I paid for a fourth just to make sure that it was really mine. But what that could have been was someone monkeying around in my phone, pretending that they had rights to be things. We have technologists that come in from foreign lands who really started learning technology and how to disassemble and assemble cell phones and computers at the earliest ages of three, four, and five. I want you to think about Jackie Chan as a marvelous martial artist and a really good militant guy. That he has produced some of the best comedy action films we've ever had in American soil. He's also from a humbling place. And his place literally is a land on water, if you will, based on boats and floats and 
things that they build off the water so that nation knows how to handle those things knows how to build things that are fairly stable but at the same time you know that a few years back one of our famous TV personalities lost a life partner in a huge hurricane a huge tidal wave that swept a lot of people who weren't expecting it away the truth is that the Lord has the right to clean houses in places of sin the Lord has the right to build volcanoes is openly truthful to allow the inner earth burp itself from within but the truth is we can never be in power over God and this is where people really have lost themselves they want to believe like we see in all the marvelous Marvel films and all the marvelous comic book uh, uh, that have been put to the, the filmography of cinema is that there's always some warlord there's always some megalomine there's always some initiative person that wants to be in charge of the world the great thing we learn about from film is about new technologies, about new possibilities, and about the risks to our lives. You see, in life we have moments of time to speak the truth. And sometimes people don't understand what someone is doing because the truth is they're not in their life. They're nowhere remotely, technically, officially, legally, or any otherwise financially bound to that person's life. So they can make up marvelous records, they can say all the fucking things they want to, but the minute they do that, they put their own life susceptible to a lot of things, to legality and to lethality is what I usually talk about. Because when you monkey with someone's life on the legal level, you become a target of retribution because you probably had no right to do so. You also become the target of a revenge act, which means if you have monkeyed with someone's life to the point that their whole life is now in peril, they may just say, tell me who told you that. Because I'm going to take care of that because under the rights of the Second Amendment, I have the right to defend myself. But if you are producing technologies and you're producing chemistries that don't allow me to defend my own life from sexual assault, from physical abuse, from mutilation, and from manipulation, then I'm going to be motherfucking pissed off at you. Because the American Constitution, the amendments, and everything we hold dear across the world when we go out there with our own knives, our own spears, and our guns to fight for in terms of liberties you're not allowing right here in American soil.